Okay, I have a question from uh, Nick Nibre Nibre from online. Uh, if you use one, if you use 127, expect a retracement, and it goes to 161. How do you determine and confirm the turning point to short? Well, let, let's put it this way: um, we're looking at Baidu at a 127 and a 1.618. If that doesn't work, it's going to go quite a bit higher. So you, you use 127 first. And then if it doesn't work, you've got to go to the 1.618. Now, the question you have to ask yourself is, what is the difference between 1.27 and 1.618? Let's just, let's just show an example of that right now. Let me get rid of everything on this thing. This is gold, and it's a weekly gold chart. And I'm just going to blow it up right here so we can see it. And I'm going to draw the line from the high of the weekly of November down into January. And you'll see we were within about $10 on the exact uh, high of that 1.27 move. Now, if it misses, it can go all the way to the 1.27, you see, or 1.618. So if you sell it here, you can only risk a small amount because then it goes higher. As we got closer to it, we were watching the daily, and we were able to catch these last little ones that got us right to the almost exact price in gold. We did that by going to a daily chart. And that got us to right here. And that got us to this level right here. There was the high. There was your, I got too many ABCDs here. Let me get, get rid of all this. And I'll show you what we were looking at. This is a little bit bigger move. We put this one down here. That one was up. But then we now we had ABCDs all the way up. And so all we were doing now was watching the last moves occur, that took us to the 1.27. We had an A, B, C, D coming in. And this is daily, so you have some pretty good times. So right in this zone is what we were looking for, OK? And we had another A, B, C, D forming right here. See, there was another one right here. So this was the zone we were looking for. And this is where we went short. Uh, this was on the uh, end of June, on 21st of June. And we covered it right here. This is where we covered Let me show you why we covered it. Uh, just remove some of these things. And if you go back to your basics, we wanted to see the last low we made, the last major low. Stopped exactly at the 786 retracement. And we had an A, B, C, D from the last three weeks forming right there, OK? And so that was the reason. We had actually another one here, too, but I think it was a little bit overshot. Yeah, this one didn't quite make it. But this was the area because you were right at a 786 retracement of that move. And I believe uh, we were really close to a 618 of the other move also. See, look at this. <laughs> They're right spot on. This is 618 of this leg. Okay, and it's seven eight six to that leg. I mean, that's where gold stopped. I mean, right on the, right on the money. There's six one eight of that swing. Seven eight six of this swing. And that's what we uh, we covered there. We sold it right there. Covered it right there. One hundred and ten dollars uh, and first winning trade since nineteen forty three. I'm very proud of that one. All right, I've got a question online from F Chung. Has there been a time in the past in your experience? where so many signals indicate a top in the market and a low in the US dollar and the pattern has not planned uh, has not panned out as expected yeah that happens all the time unfortunately um, I can't remember the last time uh, with about you know I really don't know the answer to that I think it was in October of um, last year we had a bunch of things that said October 19th 20th and we sold off about 8 or 10 percent in the stock market. And then we went up again and didn't make another high until April. The one in April was a big one because it was at a 61 percent retracement along with a whole bunch of astrological things. So that happens all the time. This one is so big in August that it's, uh, it's frightening. But, you know, maybe it does nothing. I don't know. 1989, I wrote a I wrote a special newsletter about uh, on November 9th of 1989, there was going to be the most significant market thing that ever happened, even worse than October 19th, 1989. And I 
you know, I was on CNBC with Bill Griffith, and uh, I told him that it would be on Time Magazine, and it would be the thing of the decade. And the market didn't do anything on November 9th, but it was the day that the Berlin Wall fell. So I was right about being a big event, but nothing in the market happened. We're only dealing in probabilities. Uh, Lady, I have a question. Uh, I see you using a lot of extensions 1.2, 1 1.6. 1 uh, what about when A, B uh, equal 100% CD? When you use this extent, uh, I mean 100% ratio. When do I use the 100% ratio? Yes. Well, I use it most of the time. I don't really change the AB equals CD formation tool unless it goes far beyond where I think it is, and then I'll double check to see where it went just to see if it's gone to the 127 or 1 1.618. The primary thing I look at when I, when I do a chart is I go back and I look at the uh, support and resistance based on the Fibonacci numbers, just like on this gold chart. I would go back to this low and this low to determine, you know, where the where the numbers are, and then I work backwards to see where the patterns are. That tells me whether I think I'm at the, the high or low of the move. See, so, you know, if gold now, what we're look, what we're watching now in gold is we're watching for the 61% retracement to come back off this high. See, that comes in at that 12.20. That's why I said if we get above 12.20, then gold has probably finished this correction, and we could be headed for 13, 1400. Yes, but this is retracement, regarding retracement, what about extension? I mean, basically, uh, you're looking I can't at three hear you, man. basically, you're looking at three potential uh, turning points at 100 and uh, 1.27 and 1 1.6. Yes, I am, but there'll be other things to tell me that that's the number that I'm looking at. Look, look at this gold. Now, if I look at it, if I look at this gold a little bit closer, and blow it up, I know that I'm looking at the 618 coming in right here, and I want to take the next swing from a high to the low, and I put it down here. That tells me that the 127 comes in right here. So this is the zone, 127, right in here is the zone that I'm going to be looking at between 1.27. If it gets above that, the next zone that it's going to go to would be this one right here. So this is, I can't risk this much. I, I either have to sell it here and risk just a little bit, or wait and sell it there. Because there's no pattern in gold right now. It's just a straight up move. We've been at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days in a row. So there's no pattern that's here. Here we had a pattern. Right now we don't. So I'm just looking at the extensions of the of the last swings. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I've I've uh, and I'm sure you're familiar with Ray Merriman. He spoke here last month. Yes, Ray's a very very uh, old friend. I've known him for a long time. I don't have much contact with him um, anymore, but I mean I I see his material and uh, he's a very bright. He's one of the better researchers in the business. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he happens to live right here in Michigan, so he does his uh, his he has two events every year. He does uh, he does right here, and we run that for him and. So I have the opportunity to uh, see him in person, which is great. But uh, so I've studied uh, financial, um, you know, uh, planetary cycles as well as Fibonacci and Elliott Wave for quite a few years. And I know that uh, in the Fibonacci book that I'm reading, and I'm not familiar with your other books in terms of content, but um, you in the Fibonacci book you mentioned at the beginning a um, uh, Venus Uranus aspect that is that correlates to planetary or to market cycle tops and I don't know if bottoms too but I noticed the chart in the beginning uh, of the book uh, had had um, I don't remember if it was the S&P or the or the Dow or what but it had um, that planetary cycle in place uh, on that chart and it was precise it was right at every market top that I could see and I know that right now we have a Venus Uranus planetary cycle this weekend so I was curious how now I know that Shelly told me that you don't really in the techniques that she uses she doesn't really use that but she said that you occasionally do use that and uh, I can't remember what she called it but but you use you do use planetary cycles in conjunction with Fibonacci or in, in conjunction with the techniques in your Fibonacci book can you explain what role that plays for you 
it basically gets down to the point where you have to determine you know, whether you want to be a buyer or seller, and pattern recognition is a leading indicator. All the Astro stuff does is give timing indications is what it does. Um, it's quite accurate because um, there was a big article uh, last week by, um, by someone, and the astrology stuff is beginning to come into the public eye more and more, so you might as well get used to it because it's on its way. Okay, well, looks like we're good. Uh, thank you very much, Larry. I, I'll, we'll leave you to going shopping with your little girl. Uh, we appreciate all the time you took with us, and it was a phenomenal presentation.